Most attractive women are giving advice to average women about entitlement. In honesty, really beautiful young women can afford to be entitled. Um, a man of a certain caliber is not going to care, or he'll care, he'll tell her what he needs to tell her, he'll smash and then dash. But when you're an average looking woman, an average li li lifestyle, and you're an average person, you have to have average standards. I'm talking about whether or not she's, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I, I want to get paid for, I'm not, what, how dare you give me this? It is as if you, this all happens in a, in a vacuum. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Yeah, Dante, uh, I want to get your thoughts on this video. This is a female perspective, and uh, this is uh, from an interview, and it's it's kind of like a controversial take. Some people are lying or furious about it. I want to get your thoughts on it. Most attractive women are giving advice to average women about entitlement. In honesty, really beautiful young women can afford to be entitled. Life is easy for them. This is just an unfair <laughs> fact of life. Now they're saying this is what you get out of life. Don't settle for anything less. Make sure you don't do 50-50, blah, blah. Majority of women are average. Majority of women don't get that kind of treatment from men. When you are taking advice, looks matter. They really, really matter. You're incredibly beautiful and you're stunning. Yes, you can be entitled. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, men will reward that. But when you're an average looking woman, an average li li lifestyle, and you're an average person, you have to have average standards. And the average woman, the entitlement won't work for you. Teamwork will work for you. Most women, most men are average. So teamwork works better. Women are taking advice from these women online. Right. And that advice doesn't apply because for the most part, these women online are, I don't know, Instagram models and uh, uber attractive well, women so your thoughts on that well i would i would say this a lot of the women who are giving advice online are not necessarily these drop dead gorgeous women in the first place i mean you'll you'll find an average woman online talking about um talking about whether or not she's you know i'm not i'm not i, I want to get paid for i'm not what how dare you give me this so there's there's that too there's there's a, a level of distortion i guess or a level of uh of idea of the fact that people are not really honest or they're delusional about what and who they are in the first place so so you're getting that as well you're getting average women giving advice uh as if they're supermodels you know and then the other thing uh, other thing about that is that none and this is this is what's primarily one of my main critiques about about kevin samuels is like it is as if it is as if you this all happens in a in a vacuum where attractive people only talk to attractive people we're also assuming that the trauma that people have gone through in their childhood has no factor in in the way that we respond or the way that we re respond. Um, you can also be an attractive woman who is a is a, a beast when it comes to her personality, and um, a man of a certain caliber is not going to care, or he'll care. He'll tell her what he needs to tell her. He'll smash and then dash. So I I think that the problem with all of the so-called dating uh, gurus or, or these people that are giving advice, they're giving advice from a perspective of somebody who who acts as if this all happens in a vacuum where only good looking people date good people, seven, tens date tens, twelves with when there's a whole bunch of other factors in place, there's a, there's a, I mean, you know, you ask me, Puff Daddy, eyes, his eyes is real close together. They, mm -hmm. they he, he only got one tear duct. Like, so it's like. You're saying but, he's not an attractive looking man. He was never. He's fine. He's, he's fine. He's average. I mean, if you got, if you got the best barbers and the skincare and the clothes and stuff like that, but he's a, he's a, he got his, his eyes is way close together. He, you know, like I, you know how we talk about how somebody threw his features on the floor and then swept them up with a, getting ready to pick them up with a dustpan. So, mm. but, 
Um, I remember specifically, and then that doesn't even take into consideration um, somebody's swag, like a guy's swag, or how goofy a woman can be if she is attractive. I mean, there's a, you see, like it's one, that's one tear duct, man. Yeah, he does look like he's not too far off. Ge- genetically, a couple clicks to the right, and he'd be saying, I'm the captain now. Yeah, 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 and yeah. and I mean, and this is that's the best of him. That's he. Yeah, that's him with the top line. people. Yeah, his line just got shot. He just got his beard lined up and everything, and it, it's like he's an average dude. But what did he have access to because of money and whatever he had access to? And then let's look at the the we we're, we're literally looking at the fact that he was uh just beating up his woman in a in a towel in the in the hotel. So I mean as if this exists in a vacuum, um attractive women go with attractive men. There are men who have swagger. There's and 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 I'm telling you really honestly, if you go, if you're laying the five bricks and you learn the techniques, it none of that matters. None of it matters. You get opportunities that you never thought you would get. You'll get situations. You'll turn down situations that you didn't even think you would get in the first place. Yeah, you know, I think part of what what this woman was saying, and I agree with this heavily, is there's a lot of uh, self-esteem building within women and relationships online, which I think it's good to build up self-esteem. I'm not arguing about that. But I do think it's the wrong advice because it is giving the same advice that comes from somebody who is a supermodel or who is, you know, a a perfect 10 body wise that she can make those demands and still maintain and still be in a relationship. But if you're, you're, if you're not, if you're not massively hot, women are still bringing that same attitude to a regular average looking relationship. And that's what her point is. And that's where it absolutely, I agree. And I, and I think that is also the fault of men. That's also, there's so, so there's two problems. Women are taking this advice from, from hotties and trying to implement them in their lives. But also men allow this type of behavior. How many times have we seen guys with some attractive woman who is just letting her behave yeah. uh, in a ratchet fashion? How often have we seen average women yeah. Yeah. acting that same way? It's because guys let them because guys have this fear. Because it is so hard the way we have set up our system and the way we allow it. It is hard for a guy to get a woman. Right. Because it's a buyer's market for the women. And so or so, excuse me, I guess it's a, a seller's market for the women. You know, well, plenty yeah. of offers on her part. She can pick and choose for a guy. It's a little more difficult <laughs> because of the way we have societally we have set it up. And so that's why guys are like, oh, man, once I got a woman, I may never get another one here. I got this one. Uh, man, it, I, I, I can't let her go. So I better put up with all this. And that's ironically the wrong attitude to have because the more you put up with that, the less she respects you. Okay, so here's a here's a question. Um, um, I've been advocating laying the five bricks and the the process that I put guys through. When has that not gotten guys, uh, women that they would have normally thought is a hundred percent out of their league? It it happens over and over and over again. Now, I mean, the the reality is that this idea of what's better or who's better just really doesn't matter. Um, most people are not uh, informed about anything, um, and half the time, if you if you act as if as if you have like I always say this when you. How does a woman know who you are as a man? You tell her. You it comes right out of your mouth. Now you don't you don't tell her, oh, I'm a great guy. My other car is a Porsche. I mean, because that's just corny. But the way in which you communicate with your body language, your tone of your voice, the pacing of your voice, um, how you speak, the words you use communicate a level of confidence and value that nobody is talking about. I think this podcast is the only podcast that's actually talking about that. Mm. Um, And the reality of this is, and we've talked about this several times, when you look at something like Puff Daddy or you look at these exploitive guys, right? 
They've had access to this women and everybody is going, everybody's going, oh, it's because of the money. It's because of the money. Right. But it's it. it yeah. The, the money is something that baits them. It's just the it's the bait on the hook. But what makes them stay in a situation when when they're not getting the things that they want? And they, and not only that, but they're being abused or they're being uh, basically, you know, abused on every emotional, physical and otherwise. And and they're still not getting what it is they want out of the situation. Now, nobody knows Cassie's Diddy's. Uh, girlfriends. I don't know any of her records. It's not like he made her Beyonce and to be getting your ass kicked in that way for what she was in terms of, you know what I'm saying? What she was in terms of the industry. There's something else going on with that. There's a low self-esteem. There is. Well, is, that's part of it, but there's uh, also the dynamic of confidence and power that women admire in men to, yeah, to, to get somebody. So it's not just the money. It's just money provides confidence and power because we know plenty of women who've also dated dudes who don't have shit but either they're good looking or they're confident or there's something about them they're a bad boy it's really about power confidence and it ultimately comes to what you talked about which is an instinctual drive that's the reason right. women gravitate towards a specific man and you know right. we haven't talked about that in a while but if you want to uh, you know expound on like why you think women are attracted to certain guys. It comes to instinctual drives. If you love what we're doing here, go to patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips, and also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at patreon.com slash Manschool202. And then this is another thing when you when you talk about like uh, I, and I mean I'm gonna go a little way out and then bring it back in. People are talking about creationism as if creationism as if evolution doesn't exist, right? Or they don't believe it. I believe in the Bible. I, I what what you have to understand is there are we are still you know it, it's like I, I you know I've had arguments with guys when I talk about evolution and they go they go oh. I go, do you believe in evolution? You mean that we was monkeys before? No, that it's, I mean, that is the, uh, that is the equivalent of somebody telling you that you do comedy and you go, oh, you, you say words and people laugh. Like you're oversimplifying something that is way more nuanced and way more, more uh, complicated than you could ever understand. So when we talk about, uh, animals but you know, human beings are part of the uh, we're primates and there's instinct and there's drive there's thousands and thousands of uh, this hundreds of thousands of years of instinctual drive that where we have developed in the way and how we find attraction and to eliminate that as is it as if because we're cognitive human beings that all of a sudden now none of that matters None of the, the hundreds of thousands of years of evolution um, does it has no relevancy on how we operate on a day to day basis. I mean, we've talked about this before that when you look at a plug, like a plug where you plug the, uh, 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 you know, an appliance in, we look at that and we see two eyes and a mouth, right? That is part of our intellect, our in instinctual programming where our ancestors needed to process faces in the foliage because when predators were stalking you, you had to be able to see that. And we developed that through time simply because if you didn't, couldn't see the faces in the forest, you, you would not survive. And so um, natural selection created this thing. So we, we have this, we have a thing where we're trying to, we're actually trying to, we, we've men and women have picked the but women have picked the right mates um so far for the duration of our species we know that because we haven't gone extinct if the day that by, that that people go extinct is the day when women start choosing the wrong men now if we're talking about the social construct of that that's a whole nother thing but there is a a a visceral attraction that happens 
all the time. I say this all the time. You, you, um, women don't know what they want. Their, their gooch does. You know, it's this is what I'm what, what I mean by that. There's a visceral attraction. There was a visceral and a sexual attraction to somebody that you can't really quantify in any real ways. Um, I remember back in the days, you know, when when um, and, and people used to say that Jay-Z looks like Joe Camel. Insert. Joe Camel picture. And, and and then when he got, when he started, when people, they they heard him talk and they heard how he did business, everybody Who looks like, like Joe Camel? Jay, 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 oh, Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Jay-Z, when they, yeah. were, they were like, Jay-Z looks like Joe Camel. And then it was like, yo, he's smooth. He's this, he's that. It's, it's, it's the swagger um, to a certain, it's a, it's a level of, con- when we talk about swag, we're talking about a level of confidence that other men don't have. And so you, I, I've seen girls who I thought were super attractive and just goofy and, and then, and just goofy in their nature as a whole, because they just, uh, they don't know how to be in their body. So we have an, inst- we have an instinctual attraction. And then there's this cognitive attraction where on a, on a on a cognitive level, okay, this guy is intelligent. He's a doctor. He's handsome. He's you know what I'm saying. We put these lists together, but both of those things are working at the same time. And if you don't consider those things, um, you know, like height, you know, guys are always worried about about you know things that they feel are are you know we we say this all the time. If a guy lies about his height, says that he's five six when he's five four. Right. The, what he's really saying is five, four is not enough. Um, but my dad was five, two. And he bagged chicks up plenty while he was married. Like that was he was always smashing something. The point was his personality was so big. Um, his personality was so big that his height. Uh, didn't really matter. Now, does it not matter? There's Jay Z in that, but I remember people, women talking about how sexy Jay Z was, right? And listen, Dante, we're talking about all the bad advice, bad advice for women, bad advice for men. But if if people out there want really good advice about relationships, they can come and get a consultation from us. If you want advice from me, you could email me at advicefromharry at gmail dot com. If you want to consult with Dante, Dante, how do they get a hold of you? Go to DanteNero.com, click on consult, and don't forget to like and subscribe on all, all social media platforms. We appreciate that. I remember there was uh, some poll or whatever. This was like in the early 2000s. One of the, who the sexiest men on TV were, right? Mm. And one of them, and it kind of surprised everybody, was Tony Soprano, James Gandolfini. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the reason, he's not in great shape by any means. No. But it's the power and the confidence. That's what it is. And money yeah, and feel money, safe with him. Yeah, money usually equates some type of power and confidence and to a degree a, an ability to provide and protect. Yeah. Now whether you actually do that, that's a different story. But and murder. That. Like, like they knew they would be safe with him. I mean, this is le- definitely a fictional character. But but I think this is I think this is a great way to kind of look at this because ultim- ultimately, what are we saying? We're saying that these traditional ideas of what attraction is, is that it is really, it's really a free for all um, when it comes down to it. You can have a guy who is, is, I mean, there's all of these dating coaches now that got out of prison. I don't know if you've seen this. These, these, I'm not familiar with this. Oh, what so is this now? Oh, so there's a whole because expression for it is done. They're, they're demonetized on all. Cha- it's just and oh, they, they went. What white. a shame. Right wing, right? Yeah, um, what a shame. Couldn't have happened to two nicer guys. What's white supremacy and all kinds of stuff. But now there's a whole nother wave of guys who got out of prisons, did time, got out of prison, talk about prison as if um they would they killed they was killing it in prison, right? And now they got out and I'm I got a Bugatti and I got this, this is how much I spend, and they yell guys are paying thousands of dollars to hear these guys um yell at them. Basically, and to call them pussies. And, uh, you know, so um, it's uh, it's an interesting thing that conceptually nobody really understood. To the same token, like a guy like Kevin Samuels, who, 
puts it in terms of numbers and facts and percentages when emotion, you know, relationships don't happen that way. It, it does not happen that way. It happens in a way because there's an attraction and that attraction and something clicks and people make decisions. And then all of a sudden you got, you got Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton are in a loving marriage that you would have never thought would have happened at all. And you, and you're wondering, and people are wondering how this happened because it's not as simple as you think. The problem is the, it's the confidence when you get down to it, it's the confidence and the fact that if you're not exhibiting confidence, it doesn't matter how good you look, doesn't matter how how uh, how much money you got, it, it the the dynamic with the power dynamic will always change. You know, yeah. the The biggest lesson I ever got from you was the ability to just say no to things I don't like. Yeah. And that seems like it should be simple enough, but the reality is, guys don't do that. And you'd be surprised how much that changes the dynamic of a, a lot. Yeah, uh, it changes because it immediately shows confidence. It immediately, and I'm not saying you just go out there and just tell a woman no for the sake of saying no. It's just right, being right. honest and truthful in a way that most guys aren't because they're scared to lose the sale, so to speak, that they won't get the yeah. sale. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to—the ability to be like, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that." What's hey, in? Can my friend come along? No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm. I'm. On, you want to go out with somebody, and then she wants to bring a friend. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. No. Nah, I'm good. And then they. Well, why? And you go. Know, I. She's a great girl. Yeah. I don't, I'm not. I'm not interested in your friend. I'm interested in you, and I don't want to waste my time. Uh. Um, Hanging out with your friend because it's not yeah. because it's disingenuous on their part, and what happens is we allow women to be disingenuous, and then we're disingenuous, and then you can't oh. build anything. Well, you know, one of the things you I'll say all the time is my my honesty sharpens your your truth. If I'm uh, ex I, if I am staunch and ten toes down with my authenticity and my truth, right? You're gonna find people who are full of crap will leave you alone because you're 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 signaling to them that there's no that there's no wiggle room for your nonsense like if i'm clear about what i want what i don't want what my non-negotiables are and and i'm not willing to negotiate them then i'm i you're as somebody who recognizes that in me they would rather be be with somebody who's kind of shady who's late when they show up who kind of says stuff but doesn't say it leaves this wiggle room to to do whatever you want to do because you know i'm i'm full of crap and so is this person is full of crap. And so we we can both be garbage to each other and then just and never pull the pull the wool off of each other and never hold each other accountable. So, you know, I, I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, we, we, we got to take that into consideration. And so and and this idea of people giving giving uh, an idea about um given this advice as if it's in a vacuum that none of these other factors don't matter and they don't exist. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. You know, um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first. Cause if you don't, they won't.